please. Please, come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on, I can't take it anymore. I want that you die. Oh, why? You invited me inside. It was a mistake. I want you to leave. I won't let you go. You're not real. It doesn't <laughs> matter. You're a thing inside of my imagination. Come on, come on. My God, I, I, I didn't see you there. I, I could have killed you. I could only wish for death. Were you hurt? Everywhere. My, my wife and kid. Where are they? Dead. Over there. I'm calling the police. Don't do that. Please, you need to leave now while there's still time. Excuse me. Yes? I'm Dr. Anna Lee. I'm here to see a patient. We have 335 patients in this facility, Doctor. What is the name of the patient you're here to see? Alistair Kunkel. I'm afraid Mr. Kunkel isn't allowed any visitors. I'm not here to visit the patient. I'm here to make a report on the patient and the facility for Dr. Miles Griffin in the American Psychiatric Association. And I'm sorry you've made the journey all the way here, but there are no exceptions to this rule now. If you'll please excuse me. I don't think you understand my position or the power I have. If you'd like a taste, we could start with your job. I, I'm merely following protocol, Doctor. And that's exactly what I'm doing. What's your name? Bonnie. Well, Bonnie, before I get Miles Griffin on the phone, it would benefit you to get me in to see my patient. There is something about the man that you're trying to see that you should know. I didn't know that you were qualified to make a prognosis on the patient. Are you a doctor? No. Then get me in to see my patient. I don't think you understand. No, I don't think you understand. This is your last chance, or it's your job. I don't have the authorization to allow you in, doctor. But I will get you the director. Very well. I'll be over there. Don't waste any more of my time. Oh, I'll be right back. Hello, Dr. Lee. I'm Director Conroy. I'd like to apologize for Bonnie's insistence that Mr. Kunkel not receive any visitors. Uh, she was acting on my orders. I was appointed by Dr. Miles Griffin, who signed me to this patient. I would like to see Alistair immediately. Before you do that, uh, there is something I'd like to talk to you about in private. Um. <clears throat> I'm curious, were you given the history on Mr. Kunkel? Not to sound premature, but I'm certain he suffers from severe delusions. I believe if I offer him small doses of the truth, he may respond. I appreciate your enthusiasm, doctor, but if it were that simple to diagnose what troubles him, then I wouldn't have forbidden him from having guests. With all due respect, director, I would like an explanation as to why you've forbidden him from having visitors. My orders were put in place for the safety of my staff and anyone gullible enough to believe his condition is treatable. Is he violent or dangerous? No, not violent. But that doesn't mean he's not dangerous. There are ways for someone to be a danger to others simply by the company they keep. You're contradicting yourself, Director. How can he keep dangerous company if he isn't allowed visitors? This arrangement was requested by Mr. Kunkel, and it is something the board of directors and I were happy to provide. It has been the only effective action against the thing that plagues him. 
You're treating him as if he has a, an infectious disease. I suggest you listen closely and consider what I'm going to tell you because it could save your life. I met a young doctor much like yourself years ago. He was sitting across from me just like you are today. And of course, he dismissed what I said and demanded to see Mr. Kunkel. And I allowed this to happen without further protest. The next day, he didn't show up for work. This is ridiculous. You can be smug if you want to be doctor, but the man was found dead. Why do you feel it's necessary to give Alistair less than what he deserves? He is cared for, but we are limited by what we can do for him because anyone that contacts him meets a swift and unfortunate end. Oh, I see. Let's, let's shut him away, throw away the key. Clearly this man is beyond help. More than 100 instances have occurred in which Mr. Kunkel has had direct contact with people right before they died. For the record, I'm appalled by the treatment this patient has received. He is cared for. This will be included in my report due by the end of my visit, the duration of which will depend upon my findings. For the record, doctor, your report will be ignored by your superiors. They will be destroyed and false documents filed in their place. That's quite a story. Sounds like something out of a fiction, instead of the tragedy of a man who needs help. Go back to your hotel room. Write a dummy report on your findings with Mr. Kunkel and the extraordinary care he is being given here at Sunnyside. I don't believe what I'm hearing. If you file that report, you'll be able to go home alive. Might I remind you that everything that we discuss here is going to be in my report. What's this? That book has bits and pieces of Alistair's history. Go ahead. A woman drowns her child. What is this? I've seen enough. I want to see my patient and I want to see him now. Please. I hate to be a pessimist, doctor, but if you do that, you're as good as dead. One more second of delay will have me on the phone to Miles. Now give me access to my patient. Bonnie, I'd like you to send Michael in. He'll be escorting Dr. Lee to see Mr. Kunkel. Alistair. I'm Dr. Emily. May I have a moment of your time? I understand you've experienced many tragedies in your life. I would like to understand why people think that you're cursed. You don't know what you've done. You're, you're, you're as good as dead. I don't believe in curses or intangible evil things. Being a doctor doesn't make you any less foolish then. What happened to your hands? Okay, we'll get to that. <laughs> Do you need some water? I deserve no comfort, not after the things that I've done. I don't believe that. Hold your judgment till you hear what I have to say. I don't need to hear what you have to Sharon, my wife, was good for me. But I wasn't good for her. Because of the curse? When we first met, we used to hold hands. 
we'd go for walks, get ice cream, go dancing. We talked about starting a family and buying a house. That sounds romantic. It was all a lie. And it went on for years. I tried so hard to hide my secret that I believed if I ignored it, it would just go away. Sharon got pregnant. Things got worse. She had morning sickness all the time. And the doctor was treating her for toxemia and they gave her water pills, which we now know makes the condition worse. She couldn't sleep at night. Just fell off when she was awake. It was just nothing that was right. Couldn't do anything right, and I tried and I tried, and just nothing was ever right for her. The curse was tormenting her. When her water broke, I rushed her to the hospital. I thought that everything would be okay after the birth. Sharon had a Placenta previa pregnancy. When our baby was born, the umbilical cord was wrapped around her neck. Rebecca was deprived of oxygen, was born with severe retardation. I'm sorry. Sharon was ashamed of her. She was ashamed of her. She... She got so angry, the depression set in, and she lost her patience, all her compassion. I remember a, one hot sunny afternoon when we were sitting outside, Sharon was eight months pregnant, and she said that she knew about the evil that surrounded me. <laughs> she rubbed her belly and she told me that she could feel it affecting our baby. What happened with your wife and your daughter doesn't make you cursed or crazy. I'm one or the other doctor. There's no doubt about that. I believe that you've been plagued by trauma and that has forced you into a safe place. I'm not safe in here. Sometimes it seems... It's the people outside of this room that are safe. Curse is like a Black Widow spider. How so? It's Death's job to take a life at a specified time. Just as it's Black Widow's job to kill the male after they mate. I assume you're talking about the female eating the male? That's right. That's just as extreme as saying all human mothers kill their young. Yes, you'll find some mothers that kill their young, but it's not perceived as normal behavior. Human mothers do kill their young, Doctor. But let's just say that killing their mate is a common practice for Black Widow. That behavior is pre-programmed by nature and has to be obeyed absolutely. It's impossible to break away from nature. I suppose that spider finds one Male that it just can't live without. It goes against its programming, it goes against nature. I believe that is what death has planned for me. Are you saying that death wants you all to itself and no one else can live because of that? There are times I can actually feel the connection that we have. Can you describe what that connection feels like? It's cold. It's lonely and it's very cold. I'm going to help you through this. There's nothing you can do for me, just like there's nothing I can do for you. I think you underestimate us both. <sighs> when you mock it, you will make it angry. You do not want to do that. I've seen what it can do. What if I promise to return tomorrow and actually do? Then you would be the first person and there's 
and many years to do so, counting the, counting the time that I've spent here inside these, these walls. It was nice meeting you, Alistair. I will be seeing you tomorrow. Do doctor, I would say that it was nice meeting you as well, but the smile that you will give me will haunt me when I hear about your death. I thought the curse had caught up with you right in front of my eyes. Oh, yes, the curse. I almost forgot about that. Well, that might have been your first mistake. Thank you for your help, Terry. No offence, but we all thought you were dead already, as soon as how late you are today. I'm almost sorry to disappoint everyone. I think you've been very foolish saying that. I personally think that this curse is ridiculous. Before Alistair Kunkel got here, I remember the land outside his room was all green. There were flowers everywhere, trees. As soon as he arrived, it all died. Just like all the doctors and all the workers who came in contact with him, dead. Would you be able to meet with me later and tell me about what you know? I would really appreciate it, Terry. I get up at three o'clock. Good morning, Bonnie. I'd like to see Alistair, please. I I'll call for Michael and get him to take you inside. Michael? Can you come and take Dr. Lee in to see Alistair, please? Whenever you're ready, Doctor. I'm ready now. Michael, you shouldn't. After you. I knew it wasn't true. Can't tell you how many times I almost said something to Alistair. I can't imagine what you might have been told. When I first got here, the director had me in his office and he showed me a book with a bunch of newspaper clippings. He showed me that same book. Yeah, well, what he showed me was enough to scare me quiet. She's here, and Michael's escorting her in to see him. Her coming here is going to make people think that it's okay to talk to him. Why don't you just take away her access to him? I can't risk bringing any unnecessary attention to it. But oh, hell, what are we going to do? Nothing. We're going to allow the curse to run its course. Because of the stories surrounding him, no one will dare speak to Alistair. I can only imagine what that could do to a man. Nothing good. I'm not superstitious, 
What if the things I was told were true? I have a wife and daughter at home. Speaking to him just isn't worth my life. Your heart's in the right place, Michael. Now isn't the time, but soon you'll be able to speak to Alistair. You have your work cut out for you. He believes his curse is as real as you and I are. And as long as he continues to believe that, it might be best for you to keep your distance. I understand. Oh, excuse me. Uh, that doctor's asking to meet with me. She says she wants to talk about Alistair. I need you to be firm with her. Oh, I will. I'll take care of it. Being that you're leaving for a vacation tomorrow, this is your only shot, so make it count. And you're going to have to talk to Michael. Michael? He was very casual about her turning up this morning. I have a feeling he's starting to doubt it. I've returned, just like I said I would. You scare me, Doctor. I won't pretend to understand why. Well, you're not listening to the stories they told you about the death that surrounds me. What they say is just stories. You really believe I am? Here because of a mental disorder, Doctor. I came here by choice. I'm here because all the tragedy that you have heard, all the death, all those people, everything is... Everything is as real as you are sitting right there next to me. You scare me, Doctor, because you are the first person in nearly 40 years to talk to me who hasn't died within a day. I would think that would make you happy. Give you some hope. What I feel, Doctor, is the slow approach of something wicked. Does my returning today make the curse seem less real? Go and tell the families of the people who died that their death wasn't real. Go tell my dead daughter that, too! I know you've experienced many tragedies in your life, Alistair, and I respect that. But none of them have been because of a curse. Help me to understand. Tell me about your life. Help me understand what you're going through. It's taken me half my life to understand this curse, Doctor. I cannot just explain it to you in an instant. Not in an instant, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm not giving up on you. The death that surrounds me has filled me with hate. I've forgotten what love is. Why do you think that is? Because it's much easier to hate. Loving someone doesn't pay off. Hating someone seems so much less fulfilling to me. If you say so. Is there someone or something specifically that you hate? Yes, I hate this life and everybody who's able to love. Why? Because you're all going to die and the only thing that's going to be left is pain. That is what defines my life. I hate your questions, Doctor. I, I, I wish you would leave. If the curse is real, I'm already dead. So whatever you tell me, I take to my grave. Why? Why, why, why can you not understand that by you being here, you are, you are destroying this, okay? Others will come. They will think the curse is not real, and then they will die as well. I'm trying to understand. I have to live with that! Me, not you. What brought the curse into your life? Michael. You understand the doctor making it through the night might cause some people to drop their guard. Don't you? I do. They might imagine the curse isn't real. We've done a good job of containing it.
I remember my grandmother had been ill for weeks and the doctors didn't give her long to live. My mother was an emotional wreck. This is your mother's mother? Yes. My father worked a lot in single income. My mother tried to get a job to lighten the load, but it was just too much for her. So I spent a lot of time at my grandmother's house. I see. I remember one year in senior year in high school, I got a call to the office. Do you understand the continued threat Alistair poses to everyone inside this hospital? I do. Good. Because I've seen what it can do, and I hope to never see it again. Even though I just sit here day after day and look out this window, it is a life that is good for me. It might be hard for you to understand that something that's filled with nothing could be good for someone, but it is good for me. I want to understand what's good for you. When I'm in this room, there is no death. There hasn't been any since I arrived. You've been conditioned to believe in this curse. There is a reality outside this curse that we need to deal with. Please excuse me. I have to use the bathroom. Yes, it is. Excuse me? Are you sure? Thank you. Thank you. No! No! Blasphemy of the Lord, my home. As good as this God of yours if he can't even answer one simple prayer. One fucking prayer. I couldn't even get that. Remember, Alistair, your arms aren't long enough to box with God. You're as confused now as when you were spending your nights with whores. I forgive you for saying that. Now go clear your head.
left me no choice. I can't see any other way to escape this. Forever, isn't it? Sheriff's Department. Please, please, please. please. No, 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 no. Alistair Conkel. I won't give you any more bodies. Do you hear me? I won't. I won't give you any more bodies. Sheriff's Department. We're coming in. No. no. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Alistair Conkel. No, 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 please, please, I don't want to know your name, I'm sorry, it's nothing personal, it's just, I'm only going to talk to you. All right, you can put it down, I've seen it. It's imperative that, that I only talk to you. Hey, why don't you go outside, I'll be out in a few minutes. Sir? It's okay, it's okay, go on. Uh, yeah. so, what did I do so wrong that you would break down my front door? We received a call about gunfire coming from the inside of your residence. You have a weapon in the house? It's in the, 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 the bathroom. I, would, I wouldn't hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. It's really important that nobody else but you speaks to me, OK? All right. Can we, can we go out back, please? We should go out front where my partner is. You have to understand this, OK? I cannot speak to anyone else but you. We're going to go out back, but what I see here makes me nervous. So I want you to turn around, put your back to me, and put your hands behind your back. Okay. Here, just relax, just relax. Nothing to worry about. I, I, I understand. All right, you lead the way. Have a seat over here. Yeah, right there. Let me help you down. I haven't seen daylight in weeks. <laughs> Things weren't always like this, you know? I used to know what love was. I had a hope for the future. There's still hope. The only hope that I have now is for death. We're gonna get you somebody to talk to, and they're gonna help you. No, I don't deserve to live. I am cursed by death, which is why it is so important that you are the only person who speaks to me. Hey, hey, hey take this curse is real. You've gotta take it easy. I need you to give me a, a, a pen, a paper, something to write on, okay? I need you to give me that. All right, once I get you back in the patrol car, I'm gonna uncuff you. And you can write whatever you want to on the way in. Don't make me regret this decision. I won't, I won't, I won't do anything stupid. Okay, let's get you up. All right, step over here. <clears throat> Lean against the car, I'm gonna take the cuffs off. All right, come on. Can you? Can you please take a minute to read this before you take me inside? I need to make sure that my message is clear in case anything happens to you. And what do you think's gonna happen to me? You're gonna die by the end of this day. I'm gonna be okay. 
And once we get you inside, you give that note to the doctors yourself. I can't talk to anyone else but you, or more people will die. Do you remember that? I'm gonna do my best to pass your note along, but I'm gonna be okay, and so will you. This thing that follows me, it, it can't be stopped. The only thing that you can do is try and contain it. We're both gonna be okay. No, 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 stop! I can't go in there! Ass out! Fuck you! Hey! Right. I am holding you responsible for this woman's Shut death. Shut right your mouth! You understand? Shut up! I tried to stop this, I did. Get in here! It's behind you. You see that? You see? You see that? You see it? You see it? Sir, I need you to lie down on the bed. The doctor will be with you in a minute. Well, here's the note I wrote. I don't know anything about a note. Why are you just standing there like you didn't just see what happened? You need to find my note. Sir, I need you to calm down. The doctor will be with God you. God damn it, you need to find my fucking note! I need some help in here. Just lie down on the bed. The doctors will be here shortly, please. You need to go, and you need to find my note, and you need to make people understand it. My name is Dr. Bills. I need to know what happened to those people out there. Did the, sir did the sergeant pass along my note? What note? Please, please. I need you to uncuff me. I need you to uncuff me so I can write down a message. What have you done? It's not me. It is death, and it follows me. I can't get away. Please. I'm sorry to have to do this. It's the only way. No. Actually, please do it. Come on. Come on, I can't escape this misery. Do it. I can see why you said no one would bother us here. We'll take the stairs. What does this lead to? Every building in the compound. Welcome to my world. I've been using this area as my office for as long as I can remember. Please. A lot of people would rather see you die at the hands of the curse than see you disturb the order that is in place. 
And what about you? Me? I feel the same as the others. I appreciate your honesty. So I'm hoping what I have to say today will persuade you to change your stance on Alistair Kunkel. I doubt that it will. There is a curse that surrounds that man and it heals without hesitation. Now before Director Conroy, Director Lofton ran this facility. He was a good man. The day Alistair was admitted, he summoned me to his office. You wanted to see me, Dr. Lofton? Read it. Is there something wrong? I need you to read it. You need to know that every word in that letter is true. Why are you showing me this? This letter was written by a man who's... who's cursed. Cursed because he claims people die if they talk to him? I talk to him. My time is near. I don't understand, sir. This is a bit beyond me, sir. The police officer mentioned in that letter has died, along with a dozen other people along the way. He's here, and I'm the last person alive who has ever spoken to him. But there's got to be something we can do to stop it, sir. No, nothing that will help me. I've implemented a plan whereby no one will ever have to see him or talk to him again. I've written it all down in detail. Terry, I need you to give that to the new director. And Terry, make sure he understands. People are scared. I find their fears to be unreasonable. I'm here to help a man who suffers, and that's exactly what I'm doing. What he suffers from is his own doing. There's a lot of people here holding him responsible for the death of at least a dozen workers from this hospital, some of whom were personal friends of mine. He's a mental patient who deserves rehabilitation. He is responsible for bringing whatever has followed him here and it's infected all our lives. All of those things that have happened are coincidences and you do not need to raise your voice at me. I think I was expecting too much from you, ma'am. Hoping that you'd understand Alistair doesn't suffer from anything curable. You sound just like Director Conroy. He's plagued without a cure. Thank you for talking with me, Terry. Wait. An hour after I left Lofton's office, he was found dead. I don't need to you hear You need anymore. to know. He was slumped over his desk. A few days later, I found out exactly what he died from. He drowned. What? How could you know that? Know what? How the director died. I didn't. It was just a guess. No one can guess such a strange death. You said it like you were certain. As if you knew for sure. I'd like to know how that's possible when his cause of death was never released. What I said was just a guess, and you're acting as if I'm the one responsible. That seems entirely possible to me. Oh, this is ridiculous. It can get a lot worse. Now go with me and keep your damn hands off of me. You're crazy, you know that? Stupid bitch! What's it gonna take to get you to understand? smell that. You can. Whenever you're ready. I mean that, Alistair. You planted that there for me. I appreciate the thought, but I know it won't last that long. I didn't plant that. That's been growing on its own. I believe we've made great strides in your understanding that the curse has been because of your fears. I remember you telling me about your uncle, who died a few weeks after your mother passed away. I regret some of the things I said to him. He's come here to see you. <laughs> it's not possible. Alistair! <laughs> Put me down! 
What is it? I think I want you both to get out of my room. You said being here would make him happy. You shouldn't be here! You died! I saw it! Give him a minute. He's confused. What are you confused about? I'm here. You felt my touch. You're talking to me. I've talked to things that haven't been there before. He killed himself. None of those memories are real. My uncle is dead! Maybe I should go. No, you should stay. That man died! I've seen the shadow of death with my own eyes. You are dead. He is here, and like me, he will return, and you will get better. You don't have to go through this alone anymore. I'm here for you. Your uncle's here for you. How did I get these? You fell on a fence in high school. It's not how it happened! I didn't want it to worry you. Why would you talk to me? Dr. Lee encouraged me to do so. Why did you listen to her? See me suffer again, didn't you? Go ahead. You can have her. I don't care anymore. I'm tired. You win. This is served. It's a beautiful day and you're sleeping it away. It's dark in here. It's only dark inside your room. And only hope you can find a way to get yourself outside. I made it through an entire day after speaking to you. How long have I been asleep? Since yesterday late afternoon. You just need a little time to wake up. Doctor's been waiting for you. There's something she wants to show you. Tell her I don't care. I don't want to talk to her anymore. You shouldn't talk to me either. Other people are going to think it's OK. The doctor also wanted me to tell you that you've already broken your vow of silence to two people. Nothing has happened to either one of them. Stop resisting the cure, Alistair. Hello, doctor. When you first came to see me, you told me that you were gonna come back the next day, and you did. I didn't believe you would. I'm tired of resisting the idea of getting better. I'm ready. There's something special inside you struggling to get out. I won't let that part of you rot inside this hospital. That first day that we met, and you told me you were coming back, I. There was something inside me that just wouldn't let me believe that you would. I can't explain how relieved I was when you walked in that next morning. I'd like you to come outside with me. You should see what's been outside your window. You want me to leave here? Do you trust me? Enough that I'm talking to you when my rational mind tells me I shouldn't. Then come outside with me. I can't. I believe you can. No, I can't. The hesitation to your resistance that you're feeling could bring you one step closer to being free of the curse. I need a minute. 
take as much time as you need. Your hand's very cold, Doctor. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a chill outside. It'll go right through you. Once you're ready, call for me. I'll be right outside your door. Okay. This day has been filled with great progress. You should be proud and encouraged by it. The darkness I'm in reminds me of days I'd like to forget. That wasn't my intention. Maybe it'll encourage me to get out of here one day. <laughs> be patient. It's a big step. hasn't come this far. I don't remember things being this beautiful. It is beautiful here. I think I should go back inside before death destroys it all. Do you see those windows over there? Yes. The second one from the end is your room. I had them remove the boards after we left. Well, you took me to the other side of the building. I know this is hard, but this is what you've been looking at. Before you covered my windows, everything outside of it was dead. It's, the only thing that was alive was, was that flower. I had them cover your windows because I believed that your mind was showing me things that weren't really there. When you were telling me about the decay of the garden, I was standing right behind you, looking out the window with you, onto all the beauty that you see here. And everything outside of my window is dead. There is no death. There's only what you see here. But it was all dead. I believed that if I showed you the garden without you knowing that it was the same garden that you'd been looking at all this time, that your mind wouldn't recreate the same imagery. I am lost somewhere between what is real and what isn't. I'm here to help you. Do you want that? Yes, Doctor. Can see me? Yes, I can see you. Do you think he knows who I am? Yes, I believe he does. Please don't be sad for me. I know that I've caused you a lot of pain. And I'm sorry. I want you to know I wouldn't have done those things if I were in control. I know. I know that things haven't been right up in here for a long time. I'm sorry. I also know that I let her off here. I was telling you who I am. Who are you talking to? 
I'm not sure. Your grandmother Dotsie? She died three years before you were born. No, 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 that's not true. My grandmother used to pick me up from, from school. She would take me home and help me with my homework, feed me dinner. It's not possible. She died before you were ever even born. I enjoyed yesterday. That walk was very nice. So you can still see the beauty? Yes. Yeah, I can still see it. What do you remember about your father? He was a kind man. He worked really hard to support us. We didn't always see eye to eye on things, but I remember he always came home from work whistling. It was good to my mom. And what do you remember about your mother? She was the most beautiful woman in the world. She had her faults as well. She was weak in dependency on religion. What is it? Everything I thought about my grandparents was a lie. Then what about my parents? That's what this is about, isn't it, doctor? When you were seven years old, you witnessed your mother drowning your younger brother in the bathtub after having killed your father. I don't have a brother. You had been at a friend's house. You came home, heard noises coming from the upstairs bathroom, and when you went up there, you found your father. And then your mother was kneeling by the bathtub, holding your brother under the water. I don't have a brother. You were reported as saying that your mother looked at you asked you to come to her, but you ran to a neighbor's house. When the sheriffs arrived later, they discovered your mother had committed suicide. You did have a brother. And I just left him to die? You were a child, Alistair. You can't blame yourself for your mother's behavior. She was a sick woman who abused you and your brother. Thank you, doctor. Thank you very much. Can I ask you, why would you invite a curse into your life? I realized that I needed to understand death. I needed to know why my mother spent years of her life on her knees in devout prayer, got no response. I needed to know why God would create us in his own image and then allow us so much pain and misery throughout our life. Are you angry at God? I started to believe that there was something other than God that was in control of our destiny. I became obsessed with this thought. So one day I realized <laughs> that death was something that wasn't just going to occur or happen, that it had to be controlled by someone or something. And so I prayed to death. I asked for its mercy to try to gain its trust. I wanted to try and escape its wrath. And when I prayed, I got an answer greater than I ever imagined. And did you get answers to all of your questions? Yes, I did. And to the biggest question of them all. Which is? I wanted to know how death would respond to love from someone that was supposed to fear it. 
and death is very jealous doctor is filled with a sort of rage that I can't explain. It wouldn't allow anyone near me. You realize none of these memories are real. It wouldn't allow me any happiness. How? No matter what I did, Doctor, the more my friends died, the more my family died in increasingly violent and disgusting ways. I had no choice. The only thing left for me was to put myself away, to lock myself here in Sunnyside. And now I think I get it, Doctor. Get what? That you are death. What? I thought you had fooled me, but after you returned that second day, your persistence paid off. <laughs> If I am death, as you say, how do you explain why Michael is still alive? Last time I saw him, he didn't look so well. Alistair, listen. How come your skin is always so cold, Doctor? What is that? What do you see, Alistair? Don't give me that shit! What is that? Alistair, there is nothing there. Take me to the director's office or bring him here. I need to speak with him now. Bruce. Please undo the patient's restraints and escort him to the director's office. To the director's office? I can't tell you how happy we are to see you up and about. Dr. Lee has been reporting all the progress you've made over the past several days. Do you still blame me for the death of your friends? The death of what friends, Alistair? Your doctor friend and the former director. You've been under my care for over 25 years. None of my staff have died because of you. Tell me how this happened. <clears throat> you chewed them during an episode. We had to fit you with a leather device that wrapped your head and cupped your chin so they could heal. Do you not remember having this same conversation with me only a month ago? I've never had that. I've never spoken to you, ever. That is the same answer you gave me last time. Can you take me back to my room now? Do you need to see a medical no, doctor? No, I, I'm not feeling well. I, I, like, I'd like to lie down. Do please you take me No! No! Bruce, could you take Alistair back to his room, please? You've come a long way, Alistair. You should be proud. It's not gonna last, you know. What won't last? Everything being so alive. It's all gonna go brown again. And Dr. Lee's gonna have to cover my window with plywood. 
You wish to get to rest. Do I know you? I waved to you from over there, and you ignored me. You're a patient. Wow. <laughs> Do you have any idea how crazy you sound sometimes? Rector Conroy. Rector Conroy. Rector, can I have a moment of your time, please? Director, director. You shouldn't be out of your room. You need to return to your room and pretend that you never saw this. It's all true, isn't it? Yes. Is she making you do this? She warned me not to talk to you about it. She has my wife and daughter. She began to kill again. Keep your voice down. I don't know where she is, and I don't want to think about what she'll do if she finds us in here with him. Michael, do this. Michael, do that. Now I'm a maintenance man, too. Where are you going? Something has happened to Terry. I have to get help. No. You don't want to know what I'm doing to you. Please. Did you come here to kill me? Obey me and live. Disobey me and I'll make you watch your wife and daughter die. Now let's talk. And that's how the killings began. Sorry, I didn't believe you before. Who did she tell you she was? She's death, Alistair. And you're her prize. I want you to go home, bring your wife and daughter back here. You have one hour. If you deviate, it will go badly for you. Hurry. Your hour starts now. Do you have a three? Yeah, you. Do you have a six? Hey, baby. Honey, we need to get up, get up, get up. Stand up now. We need to What's go. Going we need on? to. It's nothing, honey. We just, we just need to hurry now. Now, come Are on. you okay? Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Come on, let's just keep going, sweetheart. I'll explain this all later, all right? It'll all be okay. So just get in the car, sweetheart. Just get in the car. I'll explain. Everything will be fine. I know what this is, but we need to go now. Come on. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's something wrong with Linda. I need you to help me. There's nothing I can do for you, Ralph. I'm sorry. She's suffering. I, I need your help. I'm sorry. Daddy! I've known you for over 20 years. This is how you treat us? about my own family. Oh, oh. can't just leave him in our yard. We have no other choice. When did it start happening? Maybe four days ago. The days are starting to blend together. She won't let me sleep. What, 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 else, is she, what else does she have you do with? Clearing the hospital grounds of the dead. How many? A lot. She put together a group of people who begged for their lives. She made them work. Work how? She had them remove the dead plant life outside your room. She had them put in living plants. I knew it. The sound of his blood dripping is driving me crazy. She's going to kill you. Just like she killed everybody else. Get yourself together. I can't. I don't have the energy. Just let me sleep for a while. No. <laughs> we need 
to kill her. <laughs> we can't kill something that's already dead. If you want your family to live, <laughs> you need to do what I tell you. What do you need me to do? I need you to distract her. you answer me. Bruce. Bruce. Hey. Hey, Bruce is Alistair. Bruce is here? Are you hiding him? No, 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 no. Because if I find Bruce, I'll kill him. And if you're hiding Bruce... I, I'm not. This is extremely dangerous. Yeah. Shit. Please get me out of here, Bruce. Lester's in here with me. Knock, knock. Everything as I was told. Tell her not to give up on me. Please, baby. You gotta be strong. Alistair isn't convinced that the stories he was told are true. That's because you told him something you weren't supposed to. I haven't, I swear. You swear? Die! If you were to lie to your parents, what would they do to you? They would be mad at me. Is that all? It's okay to tell me everything. I won't let them do anything to you. Not anymore. But I don't want you to hurt them. If they got mad at you, what would they do to you? They would hit me and send me to bed without any dinner. Just hit you? No. Well, they would beat me. But you're just a child. How much of that could you take? How long before you've had enough and fight back? No more. Sit. We need to act quickly. I knew you would find me, Alistair. Give me the syringe that's in your pocket. How did, how did you know about that? You need to roll up your sleeve. We don't have much time. This is what you've always wanted, isn't it? Yes, it is. Then pull up your sleeve. If 
No more pain. I've had enough. Yes, we have. We. I think you know. You brought this syringe here because it's what I told you to do. <clears throat> no. I got it to use on Anna. No. You brought this here because it's what I told you to do. Although we are very different, we are both in search of the same goal. Anna is not who she says she is, and she's not who you think she is. And who are you? I was once a part of you, but we were separated a long time ago. I've been searching for you for a long time, Alistair. Now that I've found you, you know what you have to do. No more pain. No more pain, Alistair. I've included a list of medications and treatment methods, as well as a log of the sessions. I'm sorry for the loss. I'm going to give you two weeks off, full pay. I appreciate that, but it's No, really... forget it, Dr. Lee. I'm not taking no for an answer. But my patients rely on me. I'm so close to breakthroughs with some of them. Yes. We're always close. So I assure you that your patients and all of your work will still be here when you get back. I know how much you cared for Alistair. His death was a terrible tragedy. Perhaps I pushed him a bit too hard. No, no. Don't doubt yourself. You're a good doctor. You achieved great results with the patient, and you knew how sick he was. You should leave here today knowing that you provided him with the best care possible. Excuse me, Dr. Lee. I just wanted to thank you for everything you've done for me and my family. Because of you, I was able to spend one last moment with my father and not that monster that lived inside his head. I have peace knowing the good part of him was still in there fighting to get out.
Ali's there. You need to come inside for dinner. Okay, Mom. Look! Is it too difficult for you to wipe your feet before you come inside? Monster! Clean up your mess. What in the hell is going on around here? You're dumb. The sun has been in the house for two seconds and has already gone and screwed things up. Everything I worked on today has already gone to shit. He's the monster you always wanted. You deal with him. Alistair! Alistair, no dinner for you tonight. Clean up after yourself and go to your room. I'm leaving and I'm never coming back. <sighs> I gotta listen to her all night. Alice there. Can you come downstairs a minute? Yes, mother. You know once I decide on a punishment, I can't go back on it. Because if I do, that makes me weak and a liar. And I am neither. I know that, mother. And you understand what you did was wrong? Yes. So you don't understand that I, I, I can't keep going through this with you. I feel I'm on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Just decided that you know. You're bleeding on my floor. Get back here, you little monster. Amen. I have to go back home. Eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito sea el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Santa María, Madre de Dios, ruega por nosotros pecadores ahora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. Amén. Dios te salve, María, llena eres de gracia. El Señor es contigo. Bendita tú eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito sea el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Santa María, Madre de Dios, ruega por nosotros pecadores ahora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. Amén.